Every day, our lives move into the digital space more and more. Our work, interests, communication, everything is there. Because of that, corporations build additional cell towers, and this fact raises strong concerns. From this video, you will learn why are machines invading mobile networks, what amount of radio emission can raise body temperature, what is a safe distance from the cell tower, and which country has the most strict radio emission standards. Sit back and don't forget to put on your tinfoil hat. Seems a little crazy. Let's start with the bad news. It turns out that we are the real consume whores, and not just some, but informational. What are 100 gigabytes of data these days? Modern games take that amount of space, and a smartphone with 100 gigabytes will feel rather tight. 30 years ago, that volume was transmitted per day by all people on Earth. A little later, it took an hour, and then a second. And we have not even come close to our time. Now, by the standards of the past, we are in a real data orgy. Here is another interesting fact that your parents couldn't imagine. In 2014, there were two devices with internet connection for every person in the world. Drawing closer to our time, the number of devices has grown a little and is now 2.4. One device is no longer enough for modern life. We crossed that line six years ago. And this is the average for the world, while some regions like North America and Western Europe look like fanatics of electronic technology with their 8 and 5 devices per person. Hence the question, is it time to introduce a new religion? After all, we are getting lost inside of our smartphones more and more. If in 2014 one smartphone consumed about 3 gigabytes of traffic per month, then by 2019 we were using two times more, and by 2025 we can expect to live in a brave new world, where everyone will devour 24 gigabytes per month. And it's not to say that the number of smartphones is constantly growing, which leads us to such wild numbers as exabytes of data. Well, for example, five years ago we consumed 5 exabytes per month via mobile devices. By 2019 the number was 38, and by 2025 it will increase four times, up to 160. By the way, could you guess what most of the traffic is spent on? I agree, that's an easy one. At this very moment, you are bumping up traffic statistics in the most popular category, video. Although something tells me that the lion's share of videos on the internet is not stored on YouTube, but rather on another hub. How much more can we circle around the idea that the amount of data consumed is growing exponentially, and that every year more people around the world gain access to the internet, and one device is not enough for a person? But at the moment, I would even say right now, a crucial event is happening, which will be included in textbooks in the future. Although, what kind of textbooks will be in the future? Anyway, now not only people connect via the internet or a person connects to a video, but a machine can communicate with another machine. Or, in other words, devices can talk to each other. In 2014, about 14 billion different gadgets were connected to the network. You've already heard that, but what exactly were those devices is more significant. PCs, televisions, smartphones, and more importantly, these guys, which are called machine-to-machine -machine devices, but for simplicity, we will call them smart devices. By these smart devices, we mean ATMs, terminals, surveillance and recognition systems, navigators, fitness trackers, scanners, and soon we'll add autonomous vehicles here, but more on that later. These are all devices that connect to mobile networks and can communicate with each other, so to speak. For example, a kettle that shows you the water temperature on your smartphone, or a smoke detector that reports a fire to firefighters, all these can be called smart devices. 
and by 2014, the proportion of such machines communicating with each other was 24% of all devices connected to the internet. Four years later, they took up a third, and I'm just going to mention the fact that their quantity had increased by a couple of billion. And by 2023, there will be about 15 billion of them, and they will take over the whole world. Oh, I mean, well, half of all devices connected to the internet. Now tell me, how should we live in a world where people smear themselves with gadgets, consume more and more content, and machines invade our, humans, network? How can the network hold on in this situation and you watch this video to the end without glitches and lags? We need to build more cell towers. But what if cell towers violate our energy field, destroy our DNA, emit dust, through which people can be manipulated for the benefit of the Illuminati? So, a cell tower is a hefty must with antennas that allows us to talk on the phone and surf the internet. From a physical point of view, these antennas emit electromagnetic energy. In a sense, cell towers and microwaves have the same roots. Both devices emit or radiate waves. By the way, it's the word radiation that scares many people, because if we talk about radiation, we think Chernobyl. But Wikipedia suggests that radiation is a transmission of energy, and besides radioactive radiation, there are other types. The sun, for example, irradiates people, and even now you're affected by acoustic radiation, and you can hear this text. But no one marches with pitchforks to the sound sources. Well, unless it's a source like this. It's every day, bro, with the, Disney Channel flow. the similarity between a cell tower and a microwave can scare to death. And if you add the details, that on this tower, or more correctly, the base station, they install directional antennas so that the signal is transmitted to a specific sector, as if from an electron gun, then sprinkle this whole thing with fantasies of how this radio beam changes human DNA and weakens immunity, making the body susceptible to viruses, you get a serious urge to burn this tower. Well, there is a 30-meter Eye of Sauron that not only wastes my life, but also my sperm. You can read through these wonderful comments of those supporting such theories on the screen. Well, let's figure out how this hellish machine works, and cut off all that is unnecessary so that the most hardcore devouts of humanitarian sciences like us could understand something. The base station does indeed have antennas that emit directional signal by 30, 60, or 120 degrees, and so far the whole thing doesn't look very safe, but let's move on. These antennas emit electromagnetic waves, which in essence are the same as in a microwave, and also the same as the radio, phone, computer, Wi-Fi, TV remote control, and even the sun. But each device emits waves with different wavelengths and frequencies, the shorter the wave, the higher the frequency of its oscillation, and this oscillation is measured in hertz. One oscillation per second is one hertz. The more hertz, the more oscillation. The higher the frequency, the shorter the wave. You adjust these frequencies when you are looking for your favorite radio station, although that example is relevant for those over 30. But let's get back to our tower. Roughly speaking, it can emit waves with frequencies from 800 MHz to 2600 MHz, depending on the generation of the network. It's that icon you see on your phone, Edge, 3G, 4G, aka LTE. They all work at different frequencies. And now, the main question, how do radio waves affect human health? From the objective point of view, from what can be measured and said for sure, there is only one thing that the radio waves can raise the temperature of the body and burn a person to a crisp. We can get that hint having looked at a microwave or the sun. It's all about power and distance from the radiation source. It is clear that the lower the tower's power and the farther you are from it, the safer it's radiation for your brains. But let's clarify. The main indicator that you should pay attention to is the power flow density. It shows how radiation hits the tissue. For example, 1 watt per square meter, or it can be tied to weight, 1 watt per kilogram. The next question is how much radiation is okay? 
The International Commission on Radiation Protection says that if the whole body is irradiated for 30 minutes with an energy flux density of 4 watts per kilogram in the frequency range from 10 MHz to 10 GHz, which is exactly the case of cell towers, then the body temperature will increase by 1 degree. By the way, you can already figure out that the less you like fitness, the safer the radiation is for you. It would seem that this number is all you need, but people know that the world of radio emissions has its secrets, so the commission lowered this rate by 10 times to 0.4 watts per kilogram, and then they divided it by 5 for security purposes in public spaces. Thus, radio emissions should not exceed 0.08 watts per kilogram of weight. This is 50 times less than the density at which the body temperature rises by 1 degree after half an hour of the constant radiation. For higher frequencies, they recommend not exceeding 10 watts per square meter. I must note that there is an uncertainty when talking about the electromagnetic field, which is directly mentioned in all studies. The same uncertainty exists between countries. These safe limits vary for different countries. For example, in the US it is 6 watts per square meter, and with increasing frequencies, strictness is lowered. Japan follows the same principle. European countries use 4.5 to 10 watts per square meter, and in Russia, sanitary standards set the most stringent safety requirements in the world, 0.1 watts per square meter. Now, let's get practical. What distance can be considered safe? In most cases, 40 meters will be more than enough. However, let's take examples of real research. Egypt, Cairo. Workers of the National Telecommunications Institute climbed onto the roof to examine this tower. It is equipped with three antennas operating at multiple frequencies pointed in different directions. They measured the signal from a distance of 6 meters in the direction of the antenna lobes, that is, in the most concentrated sectors. By the way, the 2G antenna was burning the most, and this is the second confirmation that high-frequency antennas, typical of a new generation, emit less than their predecessors. So this most powerful antenna emitted 0.043 microwatts per square centimeter. Let me remind you the limit in Russia, the strictest of all, is 10 microwatts per square centimeter. So, how much lower is the actual number? Count for yourself. Let's move on to India. There, workers measured a safe distance from a tower with a frequency of 925 megahertz, which has a signal power of 32 watts. By the standards of Western countries, the safe zone starts 1.5 meters away from the source, and in Russia it would be necessary to move 15 meters away. This is an ideal situation when the user's model, or rather their head, is opposite the antenna. And the last example, let's go to the most developed countries, Sweden, Stockholm. The Swedish research was, by the way, the clearest and most comprehensive that we were able to find. It had full-sized pictures and detailed description, how, when, and where the results were measured and calculated. The only thing that there wasn't was information on the tower itself, but there were a lot of measurements. Imagine the situation, you go out to your balcony and you see this. Hold on to your tinfoil hats because your neighbor is even less fortunate because for them a cell tower is literally under their feet, six meters away. Holy shit! So, they took measurements around balconies and apartments located as close to these antennas as possible. If we measure the balcony from a distance of 6 meters, it will show 0.0 watts per square meter, but this is the peak value, and even this is okay for the International Commission, all European countries, and Russia. And then again on the same balcony, other values are much lower, like 0.002 watts per square meter and the median is 0.018. Don't forget that this tower is located right under the balcony. But here it is important to say that the antennas were not directed at the owner of the balcony. That is, if you direct the antennas at the residence, then the values will certainly be higher. But most of the operators take this into account. These towers aren't built by idiots. 
Inside the apartment, the numbers are much lower because the energy is weakened when passing through windows and walls. For example, out of 72 measurements, the hottest point was fixed at 0.023 watts per square meter. And there were also totally harmless ones, 0.0002. The median value for the entire apartment close to the mysterious tower was 0.0009 watts per square meter, which is a hundred times less than the strict Russian regulations, not to mention other countries. Okay, now to the actually last example from a publication for techies. There they measured one very serious tower with an output power of 350 watts. So, who would have thought that at a distance of 1 meter, the energy flux density is 1.11 watts per square meter? But even at the end of the lobe, at the most powerful point, well, except for the one near the antenna itself, the flux is 0.098. And if you move 20 meters to the right or left, the result you can see on the screen. If we take and summarize all that has been said, how should normal people react to cell towers? I would start to worry if an antenna appeared in front of my window, and I mean literally in front of it, so that I could reach that antenna with my hand, and if it was aimed directly into my apartment, right at me. The tower itself doesn't generate the electromagnetic field in all directions, because directional antennas are most often used. Therefore, the strongest radiation will be right near the antenna, so you shouldn't be hugging it. And the second most dangerous spot, so to speak, is at the top of the lobe, but even there it will be lower by an order of magnitude. And in reality, you won't be at that location 24-7, and even more likely, you will be in the car, or you'll be separated by windows or concrete. And the radio waves practically do not spread backwards or downwards, so if they are placing a tower on the roof of your building, don't worry, you are in the safest zone possible. None of the studies that we looked at showed violations of local standards, and believe me, no one will build a tower and point antennas at the playground, Playing children are hardly the target audience of operators. I remind you that if you put the tower in the center of the football field, it will be the safest place for children because the radiation does not spread downwards. But if you wonder whether reptilians violate your energy field, then hold off getting the pitchforks and lighting up the torches. At first, I wanted to say buy an electromagnetic field meter, but one might order a cheap one for $20 and then get surprised that a Wi-Fi router is frying you harder than a cell tower. Proper measuring devices cost around $1,500 or even more. For example, they took measurements in Sweden with this device. The most dangerous thing is that these failed electricians spread their dark ideas through YouTube. You can collectively complain to the responsible authorities, walk around with them, and measure the radiation yourself. So, if a base station was really built in violation of these standards, and this may well be the case, do not rush to burn the tower and call for a hunt on all base stations. I am sure that such conspiracy theories about 5G coronavirus chipping are out there simply out of ignorance and misunderstanding of how these things work. Radio waves are present everywhere in our lives. At this moment you are getting some radio exposure. It is everywhere and to some extent affects all of our lives. The question always is, how much? If you haven't got an answer yet, then let me tell you about an experiment with mice that were irradiated with these waves. As part of the US National Toxicology Program, scientists decided to find out whether radio waves can cause DNA disorders. It sounds like something near mystical, but DNA disorders are cancerous tumors. So, what was done? They took seven groups of 90 mice and one control group, which was not affected in any way. The mice were irradiated with 900 megahertz waves, which are similar to a 2G network. Irradiation had a density of 1.5, 3, and 6 watts per kilogram. This, by the way, is quite a lot. Remember that the Commission's requirement is 0.08 watts per kilogram in public spaces. Roughly speaking, it is 20 to 75 times higher than international standards. They irradiated mice when they were in the womb and then for two years after birth. 
and indeed, in some groups, two to three mice developed brain tumors. You can pause the video for a better view. Radicalists are already rubbing their hands and lighting up the torches. But there are a lot of nuances. First of all, these mice were irradiated every 10 minutes with a 10 minute break, and it went on for 18 hours. With humans, this is simply impossible. You will move, there will be walls or windows between you and the radiation source, and the antenna itself doesn't emit constant radiation. Secondly, the power of 1.5 to 6 watts per kilogram is simply over the top. If we take an ordinary person with a weight of 70 kilograms, then the power should be about 105 to 420 watts. Go up to your microwave, look at the control panel, and you will see that you set about the same values to warm up your food. Then there are questions for the study itself. For example, for some reason, females weren't affected. Out of all mice irradiated with a GSM signal, a tumor was detected in only one female mouse. Moreover, male mice, for no apparent reason, lived 60 days longer than the control group, which wasn't irradiated at all. Maybe non-irradiated animals simply died before those tumors appeared. And here is when radicalists will want to add their two pounds and say that radio exposure prolongs life. So, it is not clear how to apply the results of the study to humans. On top of that, this is considered the gold standard of research. There were over 600 subjects, long-term exposure and ideal conditions for the experiment. But how can we single out the effect radiation has on a person in their everyday environment? When we affected by fast foods, alcohol, antibiotics in meat, a static lifestyle, stress, exhausts, emissions. Generally speaking, harm from constant sleep deprivation and playing Fortnite will be much more noticeable. This video has already turned out to be very long, so let me add a couple of words about the yet to be launched 5G. In principle, 5G technology isn't any different. Moreover, it will be necessary to install more of these 5G antennas, which suggest that power and therefore potential damage to humans will decrease. That is, 5G will be safer than previous generations. By the way, we saw that with the increase in frequency, the flux of energy density decreases in the measurements of the tower in Cairo. The 2G antenna emitted the most there. Show this video to those who are extremely worried. This is it for today. Hit that like button and leave a comment. See you in the next one.